Howdy y'all, the pony reviews will be coming as soon as I am ready to talk about them. I know I'm a few episodes behind, but that's for another video. This video, however, is a discussion video. And we need to have this discussion. This is probably going to go under Alcorn Talks. More than likely. Now... Let me first say this. I am not a fan of internet discourse. I am not a fan of the internet. I am not a fan of internet YouTubers, especially of the gaming variety. Most internet YouTubers of the gaming variety are several different degrees of stupid egotistical, or just plain dense. And unlike most people, and unlike most YouTubers, I am, in this video, going to name names. Because you know what? I don't care. You guys are the bane of my existence, of most people's existence, and you deserve to get called out directly because you are trash. And before you even say anything, no, this isn't for my attention. This isn't for views. This isn't for subscribers. This, like the entire channel, is therapy, kids. You see, Mysterious Mr. Ender said in his most recent video, you don't make a YouTube channel for your health. Well, my friend, in my case, this YouTube channel is made for my health. And for too long, I've been too quiet on this subject. For the last five years, I've been quiet. We of Codequestria have been quiet. What's the subject? Call of Duty. I haven't done a Call of Duty video on this channel, but maybe once. Talking about Call of Duty Ghost and giving a review of its campaign. Call of Duty Ghost made me quit Call of Duty for three to four years. That's how bad the game was. I came back during Call of Duty World War II and got to Prestige 10. A feat that I had only gotten one other time in Black Ops 2. And I could nearly, if I ever wanted to, go back to Black Ops 4 and probably do it again. I stopped at Prestige 8 because the new game came out. Modern Warfare. In which I nearly had a fully complete rank there, too. I am a current player of Black Ops Cold War. I am also a current purveyor of the flaming crap storm that is the discussion, or should I say lack thereof, I am more acquainted to a bunch of angry kindergartners not being able to figure finger paint at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Like the kind of babies that my mother used to raise in her daycare centers. Those that need to be put in time out, put in a crib, and put in a corner somewhere. Because there is one subject that gets all these babies in weird teething mode, and that is Skill-based matchmaking. 
C to a certain subset of the Call of Duty hive mind. I won't even use the word community because using the word community is being far, far too kind and giving you far too much freaking credit. See, a community is like minded and has like goals. Not split down the middle confused, and constantly angry. That's not a community. That is a lynch mob. That's what y'all are. Eight thoughts. Sometimes. Blame truth. The quote-unquote codfather the only thing you are father of is density, low intelligence, and idiocy. That is the only thing you are a father of. You are not a father of anything intelligent, let alone the only thing that you can hold a candle to is being good at a shooter video game. How's your life doing? If you are in this part of the community. I don't want nothing to do with you. I don't want to discuss with you. I don't even want to comment from you on this video if it gets to you. And even if you do comment it, I'm just going to delete you, flag you, and ban you. <laughs> you see, because People like you are the lowest form of dirt beneath my shoes. Am I a good Call of Duty player? No. Look at my curved right hand. This one. And having to play seemingly with one and a half hands. You can even call it that. With controllers that are not typically suited for the disabled gamer. I will never claim to be good at COD. I will never really be good at COD. Not in the way that you infidels think good at COD symbolizes. No, none of that. I have sat there quietly, quietly, for the last six years watching all of you flub your gums about skill-based matchmaking, something that is in every multiplayer game ever. It's not just in God, it's in Battlefield, it's in Titanfall, it's in Halo, it will definitely be in Halo Infinite. I hate to scare all you kitties into another temper tantrum, but it's going to be there. It's going to be in every multiplayer game that is ever made in the future. It is just the reality of the multiplayer business. You want to know why this is the reality? Because the companies, the publishers, they don't want money. No, 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 no. They don't want money. They get money just by people buying the game. Or buying the microtransactions. No, 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 no. It's not about money. It's never been about money. It's been about player retention. Hours. Hours grinding on the game. In fact, every time one of you Call of Duty YouTubers, and I do like three of you, Prestige is key, Necro Cinema, and the one boom, you three are the ones that I actually like. You see, every time they add new challenges, achievements, 
goals and the like, it is only to add to player retention. This thing you talk about called the grind? That's how they get you. That's how they snatch you. That's how they control you. Not some matchmaking system that no one, and I mean absolutely no one, not even me and Tyler, Dr. Spartan of this channel, can even come to a decent conclusion as to what it is. We just have to assume, thanks to videos from the exclusive ace, about the things that make it work. And even then, all those things are inconclusive. But, skill-based matchmaking does serve its purpose. No, not to keep higher ranked players away from players like me that only have a 0.35 elimination to death and a 0.25 KD, 0.25 KD as tracked by COD Tracker. Yes, I will completely out myself because I don't care because it is a video game, not a lifestyle. I do not make money playing video games, nor making videos like this. No, 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 no. I just play video games to play video games. I don't even play COD casually. I play COD to test myself. Not to get better at the game. No, 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 no. Because better would mean better situation. No, no, no. I play the game to get better mentally. I play the game to get better at maintaining my skill with a gun. Or my KD with a gun. I play to see the levels go up. To maintain my position as a high prestige level. Because that prestige level has meant more to me than any KD, any win-loss ratio, anything that you care about. I don't even care about golden camos. See, I care only about the prestige level and only about the prestige level. Because to me... That prestige level means that I have made it. That I have done something that a person with my handicap and disability should not be able to do in a decent amount of time. I got to prestige 3 level 100 with three days to spare before the season swap. And I'm probably going to do it again. Because this is the life that I am forced to play Call of Duty as. And it's not because of some matchmaking system. Or some algorithm. See, every game of Call of Duty for me has been... Skill-based matchmaking on the sweatiest level, even when it didn't exist. My life, as I live, is skill-based matchmaking on a level. Imagine not being able to move from the very bed you're doing videos on. Imagine having that ability to turn and shoot at the same time and having to be forced to stay in one spot, also known as camping, not because you want to, but because it's the smarter tactical move because you have limitation of movement and cannot side swipe or strife rather.
Imagine having to use light machine guns because you don't have the speed to trigger tap. Or make up for the delay in a three round burst. Imagine having the syntax martyrdom back in Call of Duty 4 because you couldn't get kills because deaths would happen so fast to you you couldn't even blink because you couldn't even turn around and it took you years to figure out the sensitivities to even make you have a decent. Imagine playing seven Call of Duties back and forth in a row every year and failing miserably to reach max prestige and failing to do it over and over and over again. My Call of Duty life has been skill-based matchmaking. Not of the game's design, not of some algorithm's design, but of life's design. Because life dealt me a bad hand. So seeing each and every one of you complain about skill-based matchmaking makes me want to throw up. I wish I had the problems you have. Where I had to worry year after year about my KD going down because some algorithm wanted me to stay away from all the lesser people. I wish I had that problem. I really do. I wish I did. Because then I would be normal like each and every one of you. Then maybe I would share in your pain. Which, for the most part, I don't. And yes, I bought the battle pass without second thought with my leftover card points from the last two games. So technically, I didn't give Activision a cent. But you're boycotting the wrong thing. And none of you have any real solutions. All you can do is talk. Instead of coming up with a solution. And trust me, there'll be a video on the solution. Me and Tyler will give you our ideas on what a solution looks like. Trust me, that's coming. But before you upload any other video on the subject, before you even think about it, Know that it could be worse. Know that the thing you are fighting against might be an algorithm that might be turned way, way up and may, yes, have to be tweaked considerably. But imagine every day your life whether you want it or not, whether there's an algorithm or not, has to be skill-based matchmaking. Not against your opponents, but against yourself. That's what I have to deal with every day. So excuse me if I'm not one of the many COD players that want to fight the good fight. Excuse me if I don't see skill-based matchmaking as a problem. Because I have many more problems to worry about every day of my life than a multiplayer competitive video game. And yes, 
I go on there every day for at least three hours a day, and you can say I quote-unquote sweat because I'm one of the few that play the objective, that play to win. But winning isn't even important to me. The fact that I have the ability to play the game called Call of Duty at even a decent level enough to see my ranks continue to rise. That I am good enough on a good day to cause my teams to win. That I can make a clutch objective or get to a prestige or complete a challenge that I wasn't supposed to. Those are my victories and those are the victories that I've had to attain because God has put me in a body that makes it seemingly impossible for me to achieve much else. So no amount of algorithms, battle passes, or boycotts is going to stop me from playing this or any other shooter or any other competitive game for that matter. Because to me, my competition is my own disability, not the people in my matchmaking server. And sometimes in life, no matter how much you love a game, no matter how much you want the game to succeed, maybe the best thing for you and the best thing to help your community, your so-called community, to get better, to do the right thing, is to leave. Leave. I had the courage to leave once. I did. For three years, I found another shooter or two to play. I found other games to play. I had the courage to leave. Maybe you should also have the courage to leave. Because if you feel that the game is against you, it's just going to continue to be against you. And it's only going to get worse, not better. And I fear for your helps that if you don't leave now, your mental states one day will force you to leave because you'll be so depressed and disappointed that you'll have no choice. So at least in the opportunity of you still being strong, leave. It might do you some good. And me going off like this certainly was therapy and it certainly helped me find peace in my own nirvana. See you on the Cold War battlefield. That is, if you can get over yourselves, I'll be waiting.